Derek Tant. Smell my beard, that guy. He's got a great channel. If you have not subscribed yet, you really should. Um, he gives great reviews. <clears throat> He's very consistent with his videos as he, you know, them coming out. I highly recommend him, and he's got a um, giveaway coming up for 2,000 subscribers, which I'm super jealous of. Obviously, I've only been doing this for a short time, so it takes time. But, um, yeah, uh, he's got a giveaway, so stay tuned for that. 2,000 subscribers is what the uh, <clears throat> what it's all about. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. <clears throat> Haunted Bookshop. That's what I'm smoking today. Got my coffee inside though. It sucks. I'm too lazy to go get it, so I do wish I had an umbrella of some sort. Please don't forget about my giveaway as well. Top three things you'd take to an island. What's your one movie? What's your one board game or card game? And what is your one tobacco? Flavor, kind, whatever. If you don't smoke tobacco, let me know what other vice that you would have to take. Cigarettes. Candy, coffee, booze, heroin. So a little bit about myself. I love board games, love RPG games, as you probably can tell. I love my tobaccos. I live in Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And uh, not a cold weather kind of guy. I like the warmth. Three years or so we'll be <clears throat> moving somewhere warm possibly anything can happen obviously I was brought up Pentecostal well I was Catholic until I was 12 then my mom um, had a babysitter for my sister and I she was uh, apostolic Pentecostal so we ended up going to that um, church and I ended up going to the school no real teachers um, just you know people that went to church and uh, <clears throat> helped us when we had questions if they could it was the type of church um, I don't know if you know Baptist churches or not but that was it was similar but it was more strict and it was more it was more oomph in the uh, sermons we had a whole band drummer electric guitarists and they would rock out that was that was actually I missed that because it was fun they'd say the Holy Ghost was moving it was oddly enough there must be a lot of Holy Ghost at um, a lot of secular concerts too because I feel the exact same if not a lot more at a concert the exact same feeling just more so so I'm not sure it was the Holy Ghost but speaking in tongues they talked in tongues I've talked in tongues. Looking back at it, it was very sad. My education was not... I can tell you a lot about Jesus. That's all I got. So, I went to this uh, the church, spoke in tongues, was baptized as an adult. Well, no, no, I'm sorry, as a teen. But they, they don't baptize babies, and it's full dunkage. They have a small uh, wading pool <laughs> in the church in the back of the, where the pulpit is pulpit what a weird name well yeah, I better do one more false light true light that's what Eddie from Pipe Nook says okay. lay on hands slain in the spirit slain in the spirit was something that if you prayed so hard you were filled with the holy ghost that you'd fall to the ground and convulse like um like a seizure they should have called it seizure in the spirit but i never did that i've seen it tongues and interpretation This is a weird one. So there's always the same people that would do this. Um, could almost count on it. You like knew when it would happen to us. Interesting. 
say the least. Um, so someone would speak in tongues very loud. So um, a language that no one knows, no one could understand because it's kind of being made up on the spot there. But they interpret that as God filling them with the Holy Ghost and then this is like the, the proof in the pudding, if you will. And then, so that's speaking in tongues, but they do it loud. It'd be one person just speaking in tongues very loud. And then there'd be a pause, congregation of a thousand people, stadium-like church with the, you know, the top uh, filled with people as well, huge speakers, screen, pool in the back. Then someone, <clears throat> after the pregnant pause, would interpret what that person said in English, again filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking English, not Spanish, not anything else, but English, but in our church it was always English. When I started the high school in eighth grade, um, or middle school, I had to sign a document stating that I would not see secular movies. I would not go to a movie theater. I would not watch television. I would not listen to secular music on the radio. I would not wear shorts above my knee. And I'd keep my hair clean and shorn. Women um, could not wear pants or anything that resembled pants. The closest thing they could wear was culottes, which was like um, a skirt with kind of baggy shorts underneath it. Culottes, another interesting word. No jewelry, no makeup. Could not cut their hair. Their hair had to be long. Natural. And that was for, in the Bible it said a woman should look like a woman and a man should look like a man. Something to that effect. The whole concept of Apostolic Pentecostal is taking the Bible absolutely literally. Everything in it, literal. Well, unless it doesn't really jive with what they believe, then they, then, you know. They'd work around it. It was run by a family, father, who's the pastor, old dude, his son, junior pastor, eventually senior pastor. He's still doing it to this day. We would have church services Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening. <clears throat> and somewhere in between there we'd have like a Bible study and something called cell, which would be people would get together at a, someone's house on a specific night of the week and pray and read the Bible and stuff like that. They don't call them sermons. They call them services. Service. It's an interesting way of putting it, hey? Service. Hmm. Are they servicing us? God is servicing us? Or they're serving us? God's serving us through them? I'm not sure what that means. You know, also this is when the Catholicism, uh, all the priests were getting, you know, caught. You know, pedophiles, things like that. So, I was like, really? Like, I was Catholic now taught that Catholicism is man-made, a joke, pretty much, by the Apostolic Pentecosts. And it just confirmed it for me when all the allegations came out. So, <clears throat> I was like, okay, Catholicism is not the real deal. I also had a really good Lutheran friend growing up. His dad was a pastor, and we'd go to his church quite often. And I kind of liked it more. It felt more modern. So I did a lot of research in high school on religion, different religions, bought a bunch of books, Barnes & Noble. 
I was dating a girl for a while and worked at Barnes & Noble, so I would sit in the cafe and read a lot. Hinduism, Taoism, Taoism, beautiful, God. That is an excellent, I don't even say it's a religion, um, it's a philosophy, it's a lifestyle, it's beautiful. If you've never read or picked up the Tao Te Ching, Tao is spelled T-A-O, um, please pick it up. Pick up the pocket version and just read through it, it's, especially if you're a pipe smoker, it's so good, beautiful, simple, simple, super simple, just elegant.